Hey, greetings YouTube, performance reviews here. Now we're doing a vlog, a vacuum save vlog, and today we are at the shop. And I guess I should just like announce this in a vlog. So a couple months ago, started a central vacuum business, no biggie. But you know, if anybody ever needs anything, send me a DM. Um, I'm always happy to help the collector community. So what I have here is something that I've had, well, you guys got to see. I went to a vacuum store and rescued a bunch of vacuums. And I had two Recar Superlights, and these weren't just a Recar Superlight. These were the Dot 5. That's the nice Superlight, in case you don't know, with the lifetime belt, the off balance brush roller. But, you know, it's a nicer one. And something else I discovered that both me and a good friend of mine didn't know is on the RSL 5s, they were using little ball bearings in there. So that's kind of cool. Let's see, does this one have it? No, this one does not have it. The dot one has ball bearings, the dot two does not. The other thing is where things are worn out, it's just interesting, you know, you're getting to see the machines side by side. So why this isn't, you know, scientific, you can see right there where the parts have started to wear ever so slightly in that lip. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna put this together and I'll throw a little silicone on there and that will help that. And you can see how things wore on those. So we're going to go ahead and put that together. I also have two fans to choose from. So, and then some of the other parts, haha, -ha, wham, there's another one in for service. So I pulled that off. The other one needed a base assembly that was cracked. So we're replacing that. Um, and this is a uh, central vac that came in. And if you're not familiar with these like beam electroluxes, man, are these trash. These are just garbanjo. So this is right before Beam and Electrolux kind of separated. But this has the infamous circuit board issues. Um, you know, it wasn't a bad performer, but, it, you know, if you didn't convert it to a paper bag right away, man, are those things dusty. The yuck. So that's what we are doing. You know, we also are fixing portable vacuums, so there's a DC-50 right there. And then... This is a collector's machine that I'm working on. This uh, old power team, Eureka. So yeah, that's what's there. And then of course I have those two Electroluxes are mine. We'll be fixing those later and hopefully I get to videotape that. These are some done machines. It's kind of funny. We get, always seem to get things in pairs. And today we have some Dyson UP20s in pairs. And these were both the same sort of thing. We had to break the cyclone down, service them, and such. Now the Mila Powerhead, this is probably my favorite repair of the month. This is Tony's machine, and hello Tony if you're watching. This was a gentleman who I used to work with, and he, I guess, didn't want to go back to my old work reasons. Anyway, so he brought this to us for service, and we ended up fixing this. Uh, you can go see my service video on this if you want to know more about this, but it had the basically the uh, clear plastic locking device head broken. So here's what it looks like when we're done servicing. Absolutely clean and sanitized. That took a trip in the dishwasher. And this is a friend of the channel's machine currently in the dishwasher. You know, it's uh, kind of end of day on Saturday, so we're done for the work week, basically. And... That's when we do our own personal machines or friends' machines, stuff like that. So this took a trip in the dishwasher, putting it back together. It's nice and clean how it should. We like to let things dry so the screws don't rust when you put them in. But yeah, you can see just how clean and nice that got everything. Now, since we're talking about the dishwasher, this is commercial phosphated dishwasher detergent. I had done a video a while ago showing the Cascade version of this. Unfortunately, Cascade has stopped producing it, at least anywhere I can get it. I've looked in restaurant supplies. I've looked all over the wholesale and the business-to-business -business market and was unable to find it. So I bought this. This is like a five-pound bucket or something like that. Anyways, it's a shitload of dishwasher detergent, at least a year's worth in my house. So I've basically split it up into this sort of container you get at Walmart, and we just kind of pour it in. And I've got one at home and one here. There's going to be a review coming of this, but this Auric Discovery 
really is one of my favorite little upright vacuums. You all know if you're a fan of the channel, I'm not a huge fan of uprights, but I really like this for it being light and nimble. Orc, rather than prioritizing features, they've prioritized handling, and I think it really shows in this machine. All right, back to my Recar Superlight 5. I guess it's time to put this thing back together. I didn't videotape it taking it apart, so I'm probably not going to do that, putting it back together, and I apologize. I really should have done that, but I had two machines, and I was really busy with a lot of other things, unfortunately, so I didn't get a chance to do that. Big thank you to our Patreon supporters that make this happen, and big thank you just to everybody who subscribes. Sorry it's been a minute. We're going to try and do these things a little bit more often now. All right, well, I've put a lot more of that back together, and I just thought I'd show some of the roughness of the recars, how the board is, how these things are, just like the wiring of this. And I believe this motor was replaced at some time because these yellow zip ties should be white from the factory. Um, the other thing I had to do is I had to, you can see how flimsy this steel is. They could have heat treated that and saved themselves some money. But that can cause the hull sensor to rub here, so I fixed that. Everything else looks good on this little machine. And of course the fan, the gasket's amazingly good, but if there's too much play between here, you do want to change those gaskets out. This all goes up here. Of course I haven't put anything else on. I'll turn the camera on when we got a little bit more together. I think I am going to use, even though it's a little bit more scraped up, okay, it's a lot more scraped up, but I love the sand trap, and I remember selling these new. In fact, for those who don't know, I used to sell quite a bit of recar back in the day. I remember selling this guy new. I remember this little uh, little German lady I sold this to. Man, she had problems with this right off the gate. I remember changing out all sorts of parts for her within the first few months. Again, that was one of the first RSL-5s when they first came out with it. Luckily, she had a canister vac at the time that she used. So she didn't mind it. In fact, she used to bring me chocolate, and we used to give um, European chocolate back and forth. I can't remember her name, but she was just a really nice lady and one of those customers that would brighten up your day. All right, well, we've assembled our recar sand trap, and we've got a whole box here of crud, and I'm going to keep this around for future repairs and things. Let's see how she sounds. <laughs> exactly as I remember it. It is kind of ear-shattering loud. The tone of this machine I've never quite liked as much as the Auric XL21, but this one's mine. It didn't cost me anything but my time and a bag. So thanks for watching.